What's up guys, how's it going? Mr. On sliding back in here for another ODFP, another old dead famous people showcase. In today's showcase, we're gonna be talking about Marie Antoinette, a female born in Vienna, Austria in 1755. An age of great instability for European monarchies. It's 1766 as a way to cement the relatively new alliance between the French and Habsburg thrones. Maria Theresa promised her young daughter's hand in marriage to the future King Louis XVI of France. Four years later, Marie Antoinette and King Louis were married in Vienna, Austria. They were 15 and 16 years old, and they had never met. And on May 16, 1770, a lavish second wedding ceremony took place in the Royal Chapel at Versailles, in which more than 5,000 guests watched as the two teenagers were married. It was all the beginning of Marie Antoinette's life in the public eye. Now, during the 1780s, with the French government sliding into financial turmoil and poor harvests driving up grain prices all throughout France, Marie Antoinette's fabulously extravagant lifestyle increasingly became the subject of public irony. Countless pamphlets accused the queen of ignorance, extravagance, and even adultery, some featuring salacious cartoons and others dubbing her the nickname Madame Deficit. Now, the personalities of King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette could not have been more different. King Louis XVI was introverted, shy, and indecisive, a lover of solitary pleasures such as reading and metalwork, whereas our girl Marie Antoinette was vivacious, baby. She was outgoing and bold, a social butterfly who loved to gamble, party, and even that of the extravagant fashions. Now, when the king went to bed before midnight, Marie Antoinette's nights of partying and carousing had yet to begin. And when she had waken up just before noon on most days, we were going to see King Louis XVI already at work for a few hours. Now, in 1785, an infamous diamond necklace scandal permanently tarnished the queen's reputation. A thief posing as Marie Antoinette had obtained a 647 diamond studded necklace and smuggled it to London to be sold off in pieces. Though Marie Antoinette was innocent of any involvement, she was nevertheless guilty in the eyes of the people, refusing to let public criticism alter her behavior. In 1786, Marie Antoinette began building the Amont de la Reine, an extravagant retreat near the Petit Trianon in Versailles. Now, we are going to start to see everything kind of unfold here in June of 1791, when King Louis XVI and our girl Marie Antoinette fled Paris and headed for the Austrian border where rumor had it the queen's brother, the Holy Roman Emperor, waited with troops ready to invade France and overthrow the revolutionary government and restore the power back to the monarchy and the nobility. This incident, as it seemed to many, was proof that the queen was not just a foreigner, but when she was caught eight miles from the border of France, that of a traitor. Now, Marie Antoinette's significance was mainly powerfully symbolic. She and the people around her seemed to represent everything that was wrong with France and its monarchy and the second estate. What Marie Antoinette was actually like was beside the point. The big idea I gotta have you guys remember about Marie Antoinette was this, that perception is reality for those that are living in France right around this time, right before and during the French Revolution. That the image of the queen was far more influential than the woman herself, our girl Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette was executed through that of the guillotine in 1793 after a long trial, which painted her as an awful, not only person, but mother. And with that being stated, guys, that's all I have for this ODFP showcase dealing with Marie Antoinette. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Mr. Allen signing off. I'll see you guys later. Take care.